goodbye, goodbye, I'll see you soon, and hopefully him as well. Hola amigos, hello Whovians, and welcome to 2021. I hope you all had a good and safe new year and you didn't get too drunky drunkies. So yes, today we will be reviewing Revolution of the Daleks, the highly anticipated episode. Did it pay off? Was it good? Did I love it? Find out now. Sorry if I seem a little weird. I got up at um, 5.50 a.m. Uh, this morning to watch the episode and then I filmed my reaction to the John Bishop announcement that he's going to be the new companion, I think. I'm on holidays at the moment and I uploaded that video using hotel Wi-Fi and it took forever. So I drove an hour back to get here and film this review so please consider liking this video. Just smash that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already because we make Doctor Who videos every single week and it's a fun time. Please. But anyway enough babbling let's get on with the review. This is absolutely the first time I feel like we've had a proper Jodie Whittaker era finale. Because, I mean, the Battle of Renskor of Colos, or whatever it was called, eh uh -uh, not really a finale. Resolution? Eh, kind of a finale. Kind of the first Whittaker special. Um, then we had the Timeless Children, which seemed like it was building up to something. It left us on a big cliffhanger. And this one's like, oh... Wow, here's a little bookend for what we've had so far, and it was fun! It felt very in line with Russell T. Davis's era, not only because this handsome fella's in it, but just because of how, how it was, how the episode was structured. And the episode looked absolutely gorgeous, I'm not quite sure who directed it, um, but thank you so much, you've done a good job. And I think personally, this is some of the most fun I've had with the Jodie Whittaker era. Like, I think this might be one of her best episodes. I'm not afraid to say it. I know that some people aren't really a fan. I've seen some mixed reviews online. But for me, personally, this is just my opinion. I had a good time. Well, he's not really new, but we did finally get to see Doctor 13 and Captain Jack Bloody Hartness. This, this lady. This lady right here. Oh, Jack, it's amazing to see you again. That's right, Doctor. It's great to see you too. Man, I'm never going to do that again. But anyway, that that prison breakout scene with Captain Jack and 13 meeting for the first time, I might actually move that because it's kind of creepy with Jody just staring at the camera the whole time. Yeah, we can have a look at some Daleks. We'll have that Dalek there. Hello, Dalek. But yeah, that prison breakout scene is probably, m might be my favorite scene of the Jody Whittaker era. That was just so much fun and so much nostalgia and I don't know, it looked great. It kind of looked like that scene in The Incredibles with Dash and Violet breaking out. It's pure sci-fi goodness um, and and, I don't know, it was a lot of fun. What else was new? Uh, oh, the, the Daleks, these new, these 3D printed Daleks, um, they were, I thought they were utilized quite well and they made sense in universe. I love the idea that a lot of us theorized came true, um, that they took the design from the resolution Dalek, um, and then made these bad boys and they had, you know, water cannons and like sonic sounds, sonic sounds. It was just a 3D printed riot control droid thing. Um, and then, you know, that, that guy, that one guy got a bit too, bit too clever and was like, Oh, I found this, let's clone it. And then they were all like, ha, huh, now we've got some empty shells, let's bloody start a riot. The riot droids themselves started the riot, wow full circle. And also I thought the guest cast were quite good. Um, they, they didn't last very long, but they were quite, quite good on screen. It was good. But I mean, there wasn't really much new stuff in this episode. It was just a lot of stuff returning, which is kind of cool and plays on that nostalgia. <laughs> Favorite scene is obviously that breakout scene, but I mean, just the entirety of Jody in prison, I loved. That was so cool that I don't know why that resonated with me so much. Maybe because 2020 felt like a prison. But I wish we had more time exploring that. I mean, that, that'd be a really cool online Minnesota, I feel like. Just like 13 in prison, seeing what she get up to. I mean, we got the silence. We had the, the Sycorax, the Weeping Angels, the little Pating. The Pating was back, goddammit. The prison was just such a cool setting. Um, so I absolutely love that. And that, the outfits themselves, the prison, prison attire. Um, very cool, and I feel like that'd be a very easy cosplay, and I might do that. <laughs> My favorite quote has to be, and Chris Chibnall knew that if he included it, it's gonna, it's for the fans. Um, it's when Bradley Walsh is just like, You're doing it, mate! Great, the full circle. This whole episode is just full circle, you know? <laughs> now look, not every episode of Doctor Who is perfect, and this one... 
is no exception. I felt like the third act of this episode kind of struggled. It had a lot to do. It had so much to do. Jack Robertson himself, for the most part, I actually very much enjoyed for this episode, more than I thought I was going to, because I actually spent quite a lot of time with him, and you understood his motivations. And for Jodie Whittaker's era, one of the biggest downfalls, apart from having too many guest cast and too many people in the TARDIS, um, is that they don't usually flesh out the villains. But I do feel like Jack Robertson, for the most part, was very much fleshed out, which was a good thing. But I feel like in the third act, I didn't really understand what his motivations were. He was just like, he was just like, oh, I'm gonna work with the Daleks and sell 13 out, even though like he didn't really have a reason to do that, apart from being like a bit of a dick. So that bit I was kind of like, hmm, uh, hmm, I don't really know. And another flaw, I don't know if anyone else felt this, but I really feel like we should have had more time with Captain Jack. It was so exciting when he came on, on screen finally and the TARDIS team were all there. And then, you know, he had his little side missions with, you know, various members of, um, of this fam right here. Like he had some time with these two and some time with Yaz. The time with Yaz, um, was quite good to see. I don't really feel like he had that much time with, um, bloody... Graham and Ryan, um, but I just feel like, I felt like we should have more time, and then at the end he just kind of vanished, we didn't get a goodbye hug or anything, that's probably because they were saving time to say goodbye to those two, but I don't know, I wish we had a little bit more Jack, but I feel like he will come back in series 13, I don't know, I hope he does, maybe it's wishful thinking, I'm sure John Barrowman's down, he loves Doctor Who more than most of us. With me! <laughs> Let's watch it, everybody! My what moment is when Captain Jack mentioned Gwen. I wasn't expecting that, but I'm glad they addressed it. Um, you know, it really makes me hopeful that one day we'll see some more torchwoody stuff that's, you know, not big finish, like some actual on-screen stuff. Give us a web series. Give us three 10-minute episodes. I'll be I'll be happy as Larry. And another moment that genuinely made me go, what was um when Graham and Ryan basically confirmed that the Zontarans and the Weeping Angels are gonna be in series 13, so. That's pretty cool. Very exciting times. Did I cry? Now, I've included this bit in my reviews for a long time, and usually the answer here is no, and it's just a little laugh. But you know what? I did cry. I did. We did it, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. We absolutely did it. I have feelings. It is confirmed. Woohoo! Maybe it was because I got up at 5.50 to watch the episode and I was very, very hungover still from New Year's. But when Graham was like, I can't remember what Graham said, but when he was like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to miss out on you, like talking to Ryan, I was like, oh, that got me. That, that made me like tear up a little bit. I was like, oh, that, that hit in the feels more than I was expecting. And then at the end, that little huddle and then Jody's like, bye fam. You know, I usually cringe and hate it when Jody says fam. But the way she said it then, I was like, oh, oh my, she is sad. She is a sad little cookie. And going into this, like, I really wasn't that attached to Ryan or Graham, um, you know. But then, at, when, at, you know, I was, I was bloody crying at the end. I was like, how, how did they do it? This is the least attached I've been to two companions in a departure episode, and it still managed to make me cry. I don't really know what that means, but yes, I cried. Woohoo! <laughs> Alrighty, my final review, the episode out of 10. Um, this episode was a great time. It was fun Doctor Who, but it had a lot of heart. The main cast were absolutely on fire. You know, Captain Jack being back was just such a nice little New Year's present. And it's got me very excited for what's to come. Like this Jodie Whittaker era, you know, it, I feel like it started off a bit bumpy to say the least. But now I really am getting into the groove of it and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. So I will give Revolution of the Daleks an 8 out of 10. But hey, that's just is my opinion why don't you let me know yours in the comments below did you hate it did you love it were you like eh not for me were you like ooh that's for me yeah let me know in the comments below and that's it thank you so much for watching please like this video please subscribe if you have not already and i will see you very very shortly for um i don't know something very very cool maybe some john bishop stuff because i feel like i've seen him before and he has a really strong accent is that the guy I don't know. Anyway, I hope you have a good day and I hope you have an awesome New Year's. Um, yeah, stay safe, guys. Love you lots. Have a good one. Allons-y!